What's up everybody, Phil Mendoza again. Today's video is gonna be a quick intro on how to use a bow press. We, we touched on swapping out your stringing cables in a previous video and I didn't get too much into using the press, but today's video, we're gonna give you some of the basics. Welcome back everybody. Um, I mentioned before that you know we've talked about working on bows and doing you know string swaps and other tuning type of, uh, of work on your bow and if you're really interested in uh, pursuing that and really learning to work on your own equipment I wanted to give you just some basics to consider some a little bit of safety and a little bit of uh, understanding the different types of setups as you're going to be pressing a bow. So first things first there's many different types of, of professional presses on the market or, or commercial presses if you will um, you know from the Sherlock style where it's like the X press to where uh, you've got the, the rollers that, that compress the limbs on the sides are stationary uh, then you get into some presses like the easy presses here to where you've got you can move the, the individual pegs around a little bit and you have different size pegs you can use depending on the type of bow you're pressing um, you know we've got another press here the specialty press and, and similar to the X press those presses are take a little bit longer to set up, but they usually have a couple more safety features in there, um, which is nice, but they're a lot more expensive as well. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you a couple things to consider when you're gonna either look at buying a press or look to start using a press. And it's, it's something that I always recommend that you get someone to maybe look over your shoulder or help you the first few times you're doing this because even even us that we've we've worked on bows for years, you know, every once in a while there's a little bit of an oversight or you just get a little bit working too fast. So having somebody over your shoulder the first few first few times using a press can be very important. So essentially what a press is gonna do is if you can simulate, you know, if you can think about when you're drawing your bow back and you're starting to rotate those cams, those limbs are starting to take tension, you're basically compressing those limbs slightly. And in a press, it's just holding those limbs. So that way it frees up the cams, frees up the string and cables a little bit, and you can actually get in there and take them off work. So that press, it starts to compress the limbs, simulating if it would be if it's drawn into the bow back to free up the, the movement on the cams and, the, and the, so that the limbs are still under tension. So you gotta be very careful about that. So in my bow, it's pretty standard. When you look at what you're, where you're gonna be pressing, the, the any attachment point on any press is gonna be coming in either cupping the outside of the limb or the, the, like an X press, you're gonna actually be pressing against the top third of your limb, okay? You don't wanna get it to the top of the limb, you wanna still be below the axle, but you wanna be pressing in that top third of that limb. And that's gonna simulate that drawing back, that, that uh, the drawing back of the bow. Couple things to consider, when you're setting up, I'm gonna move this bow, I'm gonna use it here in a second. Give me one sec. Move this camera down a little bit so you guys can see that. So when you're when you start looking at pressing bows and you get the one end of the bow in the, to the to the arm attachments, for example, like on this one on a on a last chance press, you want to make sure that the um, the the limb goes all the way up to where it curves in, okay? And you want to make sure that the the limb, the little arms here, are not compressing the cam and and I'll try to do a little tight on, on that to show you what I'm talking about because you do not want these limbs to compress any portion of the cam or the spacers or anything. You just want it to grab the edge of the limb. So when you put this bow in a press and you've got both sides secured and both limbs are in the right, or both arms are in the right position, a lot of times what I like to do in this specific type of press because the individual fingers are you can move them independently is I'll just get it under a little bit of tension and I'll see if that cam starts to cant one way or the other. And the reason for that is if you're going to have to get in there and work on an axle, if one of your fingers is pressing more than the other, as soon as you pop that, that axle out, the, the limbs are going to be a little bit more independent of each other and you're going to fight to get that axle back in if you're working on that. If you're just going to be 
putting a peep in or you're just going to be adding a twist to a cable or, or, or what have you, less critical. If you're working on anything on the cam or shimming a cam over, you want to make sure that those arms are pretty evenly spaced so that way when it compresses it, it's not pivoting your cam one way or the other. So once I've checked that and everything looks good, like I said, I'm holding the bow in place and I'm slowly starting to put tension into the, into the limbs by means of this, this compressing in and I free up the tension on the, on the strings a little bit. Like I said, you don't need a lot. If you're gonna be, just be working on a peep sight, putting a twist in and out of a cable, a little bit of tension is all you need, okay? So that's kind of the basics on just getting it set in there and pressing it. Like I said, you can you know give it a little bit of slack if you need a little bit more room to work in there as you're working on the, the end loops and such. But once you're done doing whatever you're doing, if you're adding a twist, if you're taking a twist out of a cable, if you're putting a peep sight in or putting a couple twists in a string, whatever you're doing, Anytime you're going to take the bow out of tension in the press, make sure you pull tension up on the string, okay? So that way you can check all your cables are in the, tra the proper tracks. You check that the insertion, the end loops are properly connected on both sides. You look at your roller guard system as well. Make sure sometimes there's some of these systems where the strings, the cables can come out when they don't have tension. Make sure they're back in place. Keep tension on the string. And slowly, as you're letting tension build back into the bow, and, to, and take it off of the, from the press back to the, to the limbs as it's gonna go back to rest position. Make sure everything just stays in its track, okay? Really pretty simple, but again, if you get ahead of yourself with certain things, you, accidents can happen. So one thing I wanna also show you here, let me see if I got one of the things. Okay, certain bows require, in this type of press, a different finger attachment. And the reason for that is some bows, like this one here, this is a prime, limb stop bow, you've got stops that are very close to that where that finger position is going to be. So if, if I was to place this in here, this finger could potentially damage that post. Okay, that, you can see if you can see that post right there. So if I put the, this, this, they have a smaller, shorter finger, and, and essentially what it's going to do is going to sit about right there. Okay. As you're putting tension into this system, it's going to allow that cam to work freely, to, to free up, and you're not going to damage the post. So make sure when you're getting ready to press a bow, you identify that the, the press you have is adjustable for the limb configuration and the cam configuration of, um, of the bow you're working on. Okay. I'm going to show you one other thing on the other press in case you have a different style of press that as far as... Uh, Kind of a couple of do's and don'ts on those because the positive of these kind of presses is they're they're, they're quicker to work right you get the lid the, the arms attached and you're ro rolling the crank and you're getting it compressed so for swapping out peeps adding a twist in and out of a of a bowstring or cable this is really quick to work on in my opinion sorry about that it's early but i guess it's not early enough for people to be calling me so Anyway, um, if you're working on, if you're going to have one bow press and you can invest in a little bit higher dollar press, the X press or the specialty presses, in my opinion, are more versatile and a little bit safer. And if you're only going to be working on your own equipment, moving the settings back and forth are less of an issue. Here in, in the pro shop, if we're multiple bows going in and out of, pro, in a, out of presses, sometimes speed and time is, is a critical factor. Other times when we're working on specific bows, we'll only put them in those other presses because of a safety reason. And the, the reason I'm going to show you is some bows, if they have a beyond parallel cam, right? The, 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 the design gets to where this, the, the limb really starts to curve in at the top. And if you put it here under these certain pegs, as you start to compress it and those limbs start to curl in more, you start to lose where the, the finger grabs on the edge and it'll want to shoot the bow out of the bottom of the press and bad things can happen at that point. So there are some attachments that, that specialty has. It has a, a secondary attachment. You can go to one of these. You're paying more money for those, those bracket arms, but it's, it's an option. The other option that, that, that we, we have both options here in the shop, but again, if you're looking at getting your own press set up for your own basement or garage uh, pro shop, the X press and the specialty press have some just built-in features that keep those things from happening. And they're a little, little bit, 
safer. That's just, I'll leave it at that. Like I said, trying to keep this video basic as it is learning to use a bow press. So these are great. You can use this as a home press. Depending on your bows, you may have to consider that second port part that, uh, that could basically it, it uh, captures, it contacts the limb in a lower position as well to keep it from wanting to come out of the press. Anyway, I'm going to clip over here in a sec to the, uh, the X-Press, and I'm just going to show you one more thing if you go to that type of press to be aware of. And other than that, like I said, just keeping it basic with understanding functionality of a bow press and how it works and what you can do and, and uh, you know, things as you start building, working on your own bows. So let's go ahead and clip over to, that, to the other press. This show is brought to you by ArcheryAuctionPros.com. If you're in the market for a new bow, but don't want to spend that steep price tag that some of these new bows are demanding, consider a used bow, gently used bow, with an evaluation certificate. Every bow sold on ArcheryAuctionPros.com is evaluated by No Limits Archery and is going to give you a true representation of the condition of the, the bow you're looking at. So head on over. We've got bows that go up every week for auction. Once again, ArcheryAuctionPros.com. All right, so real quick here, a couple things I wanted to point out with this type of press is, you know, and this is bow's not ready to press. I'm just, it's just sitting here. So you have features that you can attach to basically compress the bow in and with the pad so it's not gonna move up and down when you're working on it. These rollers are nice because you can move them out in and out to, to adjust for the spacing of your limbs. The thing I wanna tell you is, is as you start to compress these type of bows, this portion of the, the, the press is going to come up or down, okay? So when you're doing that, these wheels are also going to slightly move up or down. If you put the attachment where this limb, this, this roll, this wheel starts to attach on your limb, if you put it too high and you start to overpress this bow, that gets to be where it, could, it can be really dangerous to where you can, um, it could come off of the limb, okay? So be, be aware of that. Just making sure you're kind of, like I said, if you, if you break this limb into thirds, you know, you're really attaching it kind of in that portion of the, of the upper third, but not too close to the axle. Um, other than that, like I said, just be careful when you're working on anything, bows with bow presses. Um, they're, they're a huge, huge asset uh, as far as being able to get things done. And um, again, as I mentioned before, as you start to understand, hey, you know, I'm tuning on my bow and I'm getting this tear and I don't want to move my rest anymore but I have the ability to shim my cams. Okay, put in a bow press, shim the cams over, make that adjustment, and see if you can maintain uh, best you know, clearance from your arrow rest standpoint without having to move that and, and move it on, the, on a yoke or on a shim and a cam. And that's what the biggest, I would say, differentiator from pro shops working on bows to people that, that tune at home and don't have a press is most people when they're tuning, they're depending on moving a rest in or out for center shot or up or down. And we usually try to leave that in, as it is and work the cams as primary and then fine tune it on the rest. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Just some basics, you know, one, two, three, how to, you know, uh, use a bow press and start looking at, um, you know, understanding what a bow press does. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite press to work on is. I'm gonna try to get into some, some portable presses. There's not a ton on the market. I have an old one and I see some new ones on the market. So I'm actually gonna get into I'm going to pick a couple of those up so we can really uh, dive into them and see what they look like as far as having a portable press option for in the field, or maybe that's just your, your home press that you're going to use. So hope you enjoyed. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like, subscribe button, leave me a comment below, and we'll see you soon.